Have you ever wondered why we're attracted to tales of late night rendezvous with the devil? It's a dance with forbidden knowledge, a daring pact with an ominous figure. The thrill, the danger, the excitement, it's all part of the human psyche's allure to the unknown. We crave the rush, the adrenaline, the breaking of boundaries. It's not just about the devil, it's about us. Intriguing, isn't it, how we're drawn to what we fear? Think about it. Why do we find the occult so irresistible? Our fascination with the dark side is a complex dance of psychology and emotion. It's a dance that starts with our desire to understand the unknown. The occult represents the mysteries of life, death and everything in between. It's a tantalizing buffet of secrets waiting to be uncovered. In a world where answers are often just a Google search away, the occult offers questions that can't be so easily solved. But there's more to it than just a desire for knowledge. Our innate curiosity is another key player in this dance. We're like cats, drawn to the things that intrigue us, even if they might be dangerous. The occult is an enigma, a puzzle that we can't resist trying to solve. It's a riddle wrapped in a mystery, shrouded in the shadows of the unknown. So, it's our curiosity that pulls us into the devil's den. Ever felt like you're wearing a mask? Like you're playing a part? We all have moments where we feel compelled to perform, to put on a facade for the world. But what happens when this performance becomes all-consuming? The concept of performance anxiety isn't just about stage fright. It's about the fear of revealing our true selves, the fear of not living up to expectations. We become so engrossed in the act, in the portrayal of a character that we lose sight of who we really are. We lose ourselves in the performance, our identity becomes blurred, buried beneath layers of pretense and affectation. This loss of self can lead to a sense of disconnection, a feeling of being lost. It's like looking in the mirror and not recognizing the person staring back. In the end, aren't we all just playing a part? Belief, it's a powerful thing, isn't it? It can lift us up, keep us going, and sometimes it can even heal us. This is where the placebo effect comes into play. The placebo effect is a fascinating phenomenon where a person's belief in a treatment, even a completely inert or sham one, can improve their health. But what happens when belief takes a darker turn? Consider the concept of demonic possession. Throughout history, people have believed that malevolent spirits could take over their bodies, causing physical and mental distress. But could this all be a manifestation of their own belief? Could the symptoms of possession, the convulsions, the changes in voice, even the altered states of consciousness all be a product of the mind? Just as belief can uplift, it can also plunge us into the depths of our own fears. It's a stark reminder that the mind is a potent tool. And like any tool, it can be used or misused. Remember, belief can be both a cure and a curse. Ever seen a talk show host lose their grip on reality? It's quite the spectacle. Imagine a charismatic individual used to the limelight suddenly spiraling down into the abyss of their own fabrications. They start to believe in their own lies, their own constructed reality. Desperation can do that to a person. It's like quicksand. The more they struggle, the more they sink. And with every lie they spin, they sink deeper into this delusional world. For a talk show host, the stakes are high. Their livelihood depends on their image, on the illusion of their persona. But when the lines between the character they play and their true self start to blur, things can go south pretty quickly. They get lost in the labyrinth of their own deception, leading to a downward spiral that can be hard to escape from. Desperation, it seems, can be a dangerous thing. Ever wondered how someone could justify the unjustifiable? It's a curious topic, isn't it? Let's delve into the concept of moral relativism. This is the belief that moral judgments are true or false only relative to some particular standpoint. For instance, if we take the example of a person making a deal with the devil, it's quite a leap. A leap on a slippery moral slope. Now imagine this person is desperate, cornered, and sees no other way out. This person might justify their actions by saying it was the only option, they had to save their loved ones, or they were simply trying to survive. In their mind, they've done nothing wrong. The devil, metaphorical or not, is simply a means to an end. As we dive deeper into these murky moral waters, it becomes more difficult to distinguish right from wrong. And so the line between right and wrong blurs. Ever had to face your own demons? The human psyche is a vast landscape, and trauma can often serve as a dark, foreboding forest within it. 
This forest, shrouded in shadows and uncertainty, can sometimes morph into supernatural experiences in our minds. You see, when we endure traumatic events, our brains search for ways to make sense of the inexplicable. And often the uncharted territory of the supernatural provides a fitting landscape for these endeavors. Ghosts, spirits and otherworldly creatures can become symbolic representations of our deepest fears and unresolved traumas. The haunted house might be a metaphor for a mind haunted by painful memories. The phantom lurking in the shadows could symbolize a fear that we've suppressed, a fear that refuses to be ignored. In this mysterious and fascinating intersection of trauma and the supernatural, we can begin to understand how our minds cope with the unimaginable. Sometimes our demons are more real than we think. Ever laughed at something that scared you? It's a curious reaction, isn't it? This blend of fear and amusement is the essence of horror comedy, a genre that simultaneously tickles our funny bone and sends chills down our spine. It's an unusual pairing, yet it works so well. Why, you ask? Well, both fear and laughter are fundamental human responses that release tension. Horror jolts us, inducing fear and anxiety, while comedy provides a relief and escape, a chance to laugh it off. The combination allows us to confront our fears in a safe and enjoyable way. Moreover, the absurdity often found in horror comedy can act as a mirror, reflecting our own irrational fears and helping us to confront and understand them. In essence, horror comedy does a beautiful dance, intertwining fear and laughter, offering an emotional roller coaster that is as thrilling as it is cathartic. Fear and laughter, two sides of the same coin. Ever gotten swept up in the hysteria of the crowd? It's a common phenomenon and it's not entirely our fault. Our brains are wired for connection, for belonging. When everyone around us is reacting in a certain way, it's hard not to join in. This is where the power of media comes in. Media in its various forms can manipulate our perceptions and emotions often subtly. It can create waves of fear, hope, anger or joy, rippling through society like a virus. We've seen it happen time and again. A single news story can spark widespread panic or a social media post can ignite a global movement. This is mass hysteria, a collective behavior where a group or crowd reacts emotionally and irrationally to perceived threats. It's been used to sow discord, to sell products, to win elections. So, next time you find yourself caught up in the collective frenzy, take a moment to question why. Remember, the crowd isn't always right. Ever felt like you're a part of the horror you're watching? This sensation is often induced by a technique called breaking the fourth wall, a deliberate breach of the imagined barrier between the audience and the action. It's a psychological nudge, inviting you to step into the narrative, to share in the dread, the suspense, the terror. It's a chilling reminder that the line between observer and participant can be frighteningly thin. In the end, Aren't we all just part of the show? Ever questioned what's real and what's not? We all like to think we have a solid grip on reality, but the truth is our perceptions can be easily manipulated. Consider how a simple rumor can stir panic, or how a well-crafted story can make us question our own memories. These instances reveal the fragility of our reality, showing us that the line between truth and fiction is often more blurred than we'd like to admit. Reality, it seems, is more fragile than we think. Ever noticed how certain characters keep popping up in horror stories? This isn't by chance. These archetypal figures represent aspects of our unconscious minds. The monstrous villain embodies our suppressed fears, while the innocent victim mirrors our vulnerability and the hero, our desire to overcome adversity. These characters give form to the abstract terrors that lurk in the depths of our psyche. It's a fascinating reflection of our collective unconscious. Our fears, it seems, are not as unique as we think. Enjoying our delve into the psychology of horror? If you're intrigued and want to support our journey into the dark corners of the mind, do hit that subscribe button. Give us a like if you found value in this exploration. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Ever felt relieved after a good scare? It's a curious sensation, isn't it? This is the concept of catharsis, a term coined by Aristotle, meaning a purging or cleansing of emotions. Now, you might be wondering, how does a spine-chilling horror flick achieve this? Our hidden fears, those we are often unaware of or choose to ignore, can be brought to the surface through horror. It's like opening a Pandora's box of anxieties, fears and phobias. But instead of being consumed by them, we confront them face to face in the safety of our imagination. 
It's a controlled environment where we can grapple with these fears, understand them, and gradually deflate their power over us. It's like weaving your way through a labyrinth of dread, only to emerge victorious on the other side. So, the next time you watch a horror film and feel that strange mix of fear and relief, remember, you're not just being entertained, you're undergoing a therapeutic experience. Horror, it seems, can be therapeutic. Ever had a horror movie stick with you long after it ended? This is due to the psychological residue of horror, like an echo that fades but never fully disappears. Horror films can etch themselves into our subconscious, resurfacing in our dreams or in quiet moments. This is because our brains are wired to remember things that scare us, a survival mechanism from our earliest days. And therein lies the power of horror, its ability to make us feel, to remember and to ponder. Horror, it seems, leaves a lasting impression. So, what have we learned about the psychology behind Late Night with the Devil? We've delved into the allure of the occult, the power of belief, and the slippery slope of morality. We've also explored the lasting psychological impact of horror. Remember, the devil is in the details. Well, that's it for today's dive into the psychology of horror. Feel free to dissect its intricacies in the comments below. And don't miss our future explorations into the human psyche. Until next time, keep exploring the dark corners of your mind. Savored this video, fancy another? Click the on-screen video for an even deeper dive into fresh territory. Your support is like a warm cuppa on a brisk day. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring that bell for the latest content. Cheers for watching.